everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews. We are really glad today to be here to be talking about more new uh, hidden gem picks for, uh, from Disney Plus. Uh, this is, I think, our sixth time doing this, which is pretty fun. And <laughs> I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and I am joined by my friend Ryan. Hey, Rachel. It's good to hear your voice once again, and I am so happy to be back for a sixth time. Yeah. Uh, this is. I've got five more picks that are going to be really interesting, and uh, and I'm just I'm just super excited to be yeah. here as as usual. It's really fun, and I've had quite the week. I've had some. I had a bit of a medical scare. Nothing to do with COVID, thank goodness. Uh, but uh, if you want to learn more about what happened. Uh, Check out this week's Sunday devotional, and I, I kind of go over the whole experience. And but luckily, I'm under good care, and uh, everything's going to be okay. Uh, so uh, we got lots of time to watching lots of Disney Plus. <laughs> well, I don't know about everyone else, but in terms of my in my feelings, thank God that you're okay. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that, and I've definitely felt everyone's prayers. Uh, I really mean that. I've felt that sustaining influence, and so I really appreciate it. And uh, so I'm so glad to be able to have the outlet of the podcast to be able to, especially in the quarantine times, to be able to talk uh, to friends. And and uh, so it's been it's been an adventure and, a, and a, quite a learning experience. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you had a less eventful week. Uh, it was um, it was a pretty normal week, uh, you know. Under lockdown, things have gotten pretty much screeched to a halt. But um, I've been helping out my family with stuff. I've been painting the house and mm -hmm. doing some, doing a lot of yard work and going to the beach. It, it's closed and near me, but it's open for people who want to exercise or ride their bike or stuff like that. And so it's made this whole thing a lot more tolerable. Plus, I've been watching a ton of movies for the stuff on my channel and, of course, for this podcast. So, um, just trying to make the best out of a bad situation, yeah. I guess. I think that's all of us. I really do. All right. Well, let's dive in. So, my first choice is a bit debatable if it's a hidden gem. It's pretty popular, pretty famous. But, nevertheless, uh, it is the classic film Old Yeller. And a lot of people, of course, remember this film for the dog and the sad, sad ending, should I say? Is that too much of a spoiler? Uh, of the, with the dog. But it's really a lot more than that. It's actually, it's not just a dog movie. It's actually a coming of age film about uh, this boy who, who, because of what happens over this summer, becomes a man and the he has to grow up and i think that the uh i think all the acting is excellent and i think that uh particularly tommy kirk is really great uh as this young man uh with this dog and uh the things that he learns and how he he uh really ends up being able to take care of his his family and it's really emotional and it, it's really a great film. And uh, I love Dorothy McGuire as his mother. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, Kevin Corcoran, both Kevin Corcoran and, and Tommy Kirk were both, uh, I think they're both Disney legends, if I'm not mistaken, don't me that, but they were so big as far as child stars for Disney, right along with Haley Mills uh, during the, uh, that, uh, that time period during the, 50s and 60s and they were really good and it definitely feels like a family and you just uh you just watch tommy kirk grow up over a summer with this dog <laughs> and i think it's great have you seen it i i saw it when i was uh when i was a lot younger and uh and the ending <laughs> it was the first ending that kind of ruined me because i was just like I've never really been much of a dog person. I'm more of a cat person. Uh -huh. But when that when that ending happened, it was just like this is just like like it was like the Nietzsche quote, "God is dead," and it's just like <laughs> like it was just it was just horrible. And then everything with the father, and when he comes back, it just oh, it was just 
Yeah. It was really an effective ending, but yeah. I was doing some research on the movie because I never really did any research on Old Yeller. And this was actually directed by Robert Stevenson, who directed Mary Poppins and The Love Bug and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. And he was, he's a mm. Disney veteran. Yeah, he, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, he was very a big man for Disney, that's for sure. Blackbeard's Ghost, which I talked about the other day on this show. And that one's funny. The Monkey's Uncle also has Tommy Kirk in it. Uh, and um so this would have been before mary poppins absent-minded professor darby o'gill and the little people i love that that's a scary movie let me tell you <laughs> scary but it also has the debut of sean connery and he sings terribly <laughs> god, god i i am a little harsh but god bless his heart he tries <laughs> he did try what are you gonna do uh but yeah uh, i guess it's, it's it's not Treasure Island. It must be someone else. Anyway, but yeah, that is really interesting. Uh, it, I mean, this is a movie, Old Yeller, that just had a lot of, of uh, classic Disney involved in it. Uh, you know, Dorothy McGuire, she was the mom on uh, uh, Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, and so she did a bunch of projects for Disney. And yeah, and she was in a... Uh, she was in a movie called Summer Magic that Haley Mills was in. So it's Mally Robinson. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but was Haley Mills in Pollyanna? Yes, which is, uh, which is another movie I love. I love Pollyanna. That's what I know her from because I'm like, Haley Mills, who is Haley Mills? <laughs> and it was like trying to put two and two together. And then in my brain's like, oh, Pollyanna. That's yeah. where she's from. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she was also in The Parent Trap, the original that's another one because mm-hmm. i was like what else and it was like it, it was the floodgates open i'm like oh the parent trap she was also yeah. in yeah yeah i i love her in that and uh, those are probably that's her probably two most famous roles is is pollyanna and parent trap but anyway yeah it, it is a little bit sad but sometimes i think it's good for kids to see sad movies for them to feel all different kinds of emotions and and then you can have good discussions and and uh i don't know i mean every movie doesn't need to be happy for kids i think it's okay and uh and i think this was a one that i uh if you want to there's something too i think sometimes having a good cry kind of get it all out (laughs) and i think that old yellow is probably a good one for that it's one of the better ones yeah but uh, what, is, what do you have as your first recommendation? So for all, of my, uh, for all my recommendations this week, I've tied it all to my love of, of Disney Channel. And these are all Disney Channel originals, or at least tied to uh, something that, to the best of my knowledge, premiered on the Disney Channel as long as it's been around. So my first choice is from 2008, and it is Camp Rock. Uh, now, a lot of people probably say that's just an excuse for the Jonas Brothers and Demi Lovato to be in one movie together and well yeah that's kind of true but there's also a really really good story attached to it it's about the story of a girl named Mitchie played by Lovato whose mom gets hired on at this camp called Camp Rock Uh, she's really good at singing but has never really applied herself in that regard but she kind of she kind of pulls a Mulan and puts on a new identity and gets really in tight with the band known as Connect Three, played by all the Jonas Brothers. Uh, They're pretty relevant nowadays, but back in 2008, they were like, I don't know, the One Direction or like the Hanson Brothers. Like they were everywhere. Uh, And everyone was like hating them. Like a certain group of people hated them and a certain group of people loved them. And I was one of the people that loved them. So when I heard that they were going to be in Camp Rock, I was like, I'm watching that. And I watched it for on its premiere night. Uh, it's a really, really good story. It's, it, it's got a lot of great songs in it. Say what you will about the Jonases and Demi Lovato, but they, they're really good singers, I think. And so it's one of those movies that it's very much the disney channel formula but it's one of the more enjoyable ones at least for me Mm -hmm. i actually haven't seen it i have not seen camp rock 
Uh, and uh, but I think that it seems like a big part of that one would be if you find the music fun. It that definitely plays yeah. a big part in it. Yeah, and I I I think I would find it fun. So I'll have to check it out one of these days. <laughs> I'm so behind on my Disney Channel original movies. It's bad. As a Disney fan, I should do better. I I have a pretty. I've seen most of the or a lot of the um scary ones because I do Disney Scares Month. Uh, right. for, for family movie night. And I've been doing that for now five years. So I've gone through a lot of the basic theatrical release ones. And so I've done a lot of the Disney channel ones as well. And so I, I'm pretty good there, but there's still a lot that I haven't, haven't seen. And some of the other girls on the Hallmarkies podcast are always like, are always kind of getting at me. How have you not seen? How have you not seen? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I haven't seen it yet. But well, um, Camp Rock, uh, Camp Rock debuted like right in the hotbed of my Disney Channel viewing, yeah. where I was watching it like every day, and so uh-huh. I I remember seeing the adverts and seeing interviews, and there was this magazine that Disney would put out that I subscribed to, and I would read religiously, where it was like it was like they, they would do interviews with all the Jonases and Demi Lovato, and just it was like it was their biggest. Thing since high school musical the original one and and yeah. it was it was it was hyped to like the nth degree it was in right in smack dab in the middle of like jonas mania they would obviously go back to being popular as they are now with i believe it's called sucker but um but this was in their initial run when they were hot as fire so were they on a disney channel series uh, called jonas yes oh yeah that's right okay where they yeah. played themselves and surprisingly in this movie they play they play basically themselves yet they're named the gray the gray brothers okay. and their band name is connect three which, so this isn't associated with the jonas tv show in any no way. no it's not even okay. though it's it's even though it's basically a part of that same universe but it's yeah. like the intricate workings of that canon is just to is just above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Well, my second choice uh, is uh, one that a lot of people got. Most people got to see when they went to see Onward in the theater. It is the short Playdate with Destiny from The Simpsons, and I didn't get to see it in our screening. Uh, they didn't have the short and. So I finally got to see it yesterday, actually, I watched it and it was so cute. I mean, I love the Simpsons and the longer we do this, I've kind of held off talking about the Simpsons because I don't really feel like it's a hidden gem, but I, I probably will eventually talk about it, but I love the Simpsons. I still watch it regularly every Sunday night. Um, it was a huge part of my, uh, of my adolescence, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's, it's so crazy. It's been on for so long and (laughs) it started i mean if you think how crazy that it started where their big competition was was the cosby show i mean (laughs) what it's just wow uh and (laughs) from what i've been able to understand uh, i've seen like three or four episodes of the simpsons Uh but from what i've been able to understand about the simpsons it's like the anti-sitcom it pokes fun at all the stuff that the cosby show did well, and it, it's, if, it pokes fun at everything. And so that's why it gets away with a lot of stuff. And, and it always helps when your lead character is a white male kind of doofus, or, you know. Or you a can, yellow male in the case of the right, Simpsons. Right. But uh, I don't know. I just love the show. It certainly had its ebbs and flows. It's, but I think even at its worst, a lot of the people are like, oh, it's totally lost uh, – it's it's garbage now I, i'm like i want to say do you actually watch it or are you just saying that uh because it's it's not garbage like yes it might not be its heyday but it's still i mean it's still it's pretty funny i think um anyway but this little short uh you can definitely tell you know just there's a certain gloss about if, if something for a feature film release that's a little different than the television show but uh so there's just like an artistry and a sparkle and a color and you know maggie is so cute and she it's just about her uh meeting this little uh little tyke this little boy 
at the playground and they 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 get separated and she wants to go the next day and uh and then she can't find him and there's this is little little romance uh between <laughs> maggie and this little boy it's cute and uh they kind of uh, pay homage to a lot of classic films and a lot of uh, a lot of you know the whole leaving at the train station and pulling out you know kind of a thing like you see in so many movies and it's it i really enjoyed it i thought they did a really good job and i mean you can learn a ton about not only animation from watching the simpsons and voice work but you can learn a ton about politics you can learn a ton about uh about history and what's going on in the world you can learn a ton about movies watching the simpsons there are so many homages to different i mean hitchcock citizen kane uh i don't know there's there's a lot and uh, and but they do it for the most part in a really smart uh funny way and uh, i don't know i just so this was really fun to watch and they even were poking a little bit of fun at disney throughout <laughs> which is funny um and sort of surreal uh so yeah that's was my second choice what about you what's your next choice uh one final note on this on uh, on the simpsons before we move on yeah uh the, the my favorite joke in and my favorite simpsons joke is this is this one thing where this where this little boy mocks this tall guy and he pulls him like out of a sewer and he's like are you making fun of my appearance and the little boy is oh, like yeah. Yeah, and and the guy's like, everyone needs to drive a vehicle, even the very tall. <laughs> this is the largest auto that I could afford. And it just, I have no idea what the context of that is. I've just always found that hysterical. Yeah, yeah. That's just funny. the voice and right. the animation and just everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's my so third choice, my second choice rather is uh from is a series that ran from 2008 to 2012 and it is Phineas and Ferb. It's a bit of a toss up on whether it's a hidden gem or not, but I as someone who watched every episode when it debuted, I'm counting it. Yeah. But uh, I love this show from the very beginning. It's just super imaginative. It's really funny. It's got a lot of heart. It's got really good messaging. Uh, if you've never heard of Phineas and Ferb, it's basically these two boys who are super duper smart. And throughout the entire summer, they're like, I, I know what we're going to do today. And they just do something outrageous. And uh, the gimmick is they do something outrageous. It ticks their sister Candace off. She tries to tell her parents about what the boys are doing. And just in the nick of time, the parents never see it. And they think Candace is crazy. This happens every single episode, but it's super funny. And the kids have this pet platypus named Perry, who on the side is a super spy and fights this doctor named Dr. Doofenshmirtz at Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. And it opens up with this super cheesy like song, like Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. And it's, oh my God, it's just... It's a super imaginative show. It's got, it's just got so much good stuff in there. Kind of similar to The Simpsons in terms of like the movie homages. But when The Simpsons is like for adults, this is definitely meant for kids. However, it's got enough adult-ish stuff that adults can watch it and follow it along just fine. So Phineas and Ferb is really good stuff. I've heard nothing but great things about Phineas and Ferb and I really like the designs. I think they look really, I really like the animation. It looks really cute. I need to watch it because I, I, you know, I love animation. So I really need to get with it and watch it. Didn't they do a movie last year? Not last Phineas year, but it's, uh, it, it's, uh, I believe it, oh. it's called Across the Second Dimension and mm. it was released near the end of their run. So mm -hmm. it was, Oh, I think they announced a movie to be coming out on Disney Plus maybe in the future or something. Maybe I, I recall that. But anyway, uh, that's that's really cool. The mention was released in 2011. It was like oh. a year before their, uh, before their, their end. 
But uh, if 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 and I'll take your word for it. But it, if they're releasing a movie on Disney Plus, then I'm definitely watching that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I remember it at D23. I'm pretty sure uh, that there there was an announcement about a Phineas and for movie. Uh, but uh, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's a good choice. It's definitely I've definitely been meaning to watch. So it's it's so hard with TV. <laughs> There's such a, a commitment. <laughs> well, the good thing about Phineas and Ferb is that they're only 20 minute episodes, so you can just breeze right on through them. Mm -hmm. Well, my next choice is one of those movies that I watched on uh, as part of Disney Scares Month, and it is a Disney Channel original film called The Scream Team, and this is from 2002, and uh, it's uh, it's got a great cast. Uh, it has, um, it's got a great cast with, uh, Mark Rendell, Kat Dennings, and she's like a young, young Kat Dennings. And basically it's this man and he has to return home because, uh, his father died who he was not close with. And there's this, uh, haunted house uh, and that, uh, is like rumored to be haunted and it turns out that there is this, uh, there's this kind of midway point between the between the between the afterlife, and uh, there's these uh, people that are uh, stuck kind of in between the afterlife, and uh, they have to kind of try to make things right, uh, and so. Uh, these kids end up kind of investigating and they find out they find out about these ghosts and they start to kind of try to help them and it was just really well done and really uh clever and the ghosts are uh are kathy and jimmy and eric idol and tommy davidson uh who are pretty good actors and pretty funny and so overall i just really enjoyed it I thought it was a good little scary movie with some good atmosphere and and uh and I I liked all the performances and I thought it had some nice it's kind of like Mr. Boogity in the sense that it it's relies a lot on they didn't have much of a budget so it relies a lot on sort of practical old school effects that I just think are really fun. Uh I like that look of sort of the cheesy uh I don't know, more atmospheric kind of silly type of special effects versus the real cgi the uh, special effects and it has some funny lines from people like eric idol and uh, kathy and jimmy and i think uh, it's not too scary i think kids will be fine for kids but uh, i personally think I, I i one of the most in my opinion one of the most overrated disney films is a uh, hocus pocus I don't know. I just don't love it. It's fine. I don't love it though. Like everyone else seems to just love it. And I think these three, uh, I mean, Kathleen Jimmy's also in this, she's in Hocus Pocus and, uh, and her Eric Idle and Tommy Davidson. I think these three are much funnier and better than the three in Hocus Pocus. If you'd ask me, and it's just a more clever story. And there's sort of this backstory about, uh, the, uh, this man and his, his father and, everything and so i i like it i think it's a good movie people should check it out sounds uh, i had no idea that i had no idea that you weren't a big fan of hocus pocus i was gonna send it to you for a halloween <laughs> gift but now i've gotta undo that order <laughs> i don't know i just i don't really like the way the one kid is sort of shamed for being a virgin like throughout the movie is very weird to me and i think that uh, I don't know. It's just, it's fine. It's perfectly average. But if you were going to tell me that, uh, that it was going to have an entire fireworks show dedicated to it at Disney world, like I would, what? Like, it's just, it's overhyped, overrated. Wait, there's a kid who's shamed for being a virgin. I I've never seen it. Oh, so. you've never seen it. Yeah. Throughout the movie, there's this, the, 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 the high school kid is teased and treated badly like he's a loser because he's a virgin. I just think that's the weirdest thing to have in a Disney film. Um, and uh, did this come out in the early nineties? Uh, I think that when his, uh, I'll check. 
Because if it did, that makes way too much sense. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I guess I just don't think it's that funny. It's it's again it's ninety three. Yeah, it's it's not that it's bad. I just think it's overhyped. Oh, well, Overrated. it's just the only thing I know about it is that it was directed by Kenny Ortega, who I talked about in Newsies on last week's episode. And uh, I'm a big fan of his work. He directed Newsies and yeah. directed a lot of Michael Jackson's music videos. He directed uh, he directed the Thriller music video, which is one of the best ever, in my opinion. So he's very talented yeah. and was going to direct yeah. Michael Jackson's big coming back concert before right. his death, but ended up directing the movie about the concert being made. Right. Uh, but, uh, but, but I'm a big fan of Ortega's, so to okay. hear a kind of a downgrade reputation <laughs> on Hocus Pocus, that's a little... Strange. I mean, I'm, I'm the, uh, the outlier. <clears throat> Most other people seem to love it, so what are you going to do? Uh, but if you like... If you like Hocus Pocus, you might just like Scream Team because it has Kathy and Jimmy and it's about three ghosts and are supernatural kind of spooky creatures and it's pretty funny. And, and uh, so, so I'll flip that, flip that criticism around and say, hey, you just might like it if you like Hocus Pocus. Yeah, I'll, uh, de- but, I'll definitely take a look at that one. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing that people get wrong about overrated. Uh, is that they think, oh, immediately means you hate it. No, I don't hate it. It's fine. It's perfectly average. I just don't think it's worth all of the hype. I don't think it deserves to have their own fireworks show at Disney World. It's, it's not that good. <laughs> kind of kind of like what when I saw the movie Ad Astra last year, I mm-hmm. thought that movie was just boring. It was yeah. just brad pitt monologuing to himself for two and a half hours but yeah. everybody loved that movie it's like it's a very well made it's got great space scenes and there's a moon base on there that basically yeah. looks like the orlando airport and so i thought they were going to do like a commentary on how oh everywhere we go we turn something into a money-making machine but no it just is like yeah i'm lonely i barely gave that a fresh just because it was so pretty i i don't know uh but but yeah no i get it it's just that it doesn't mean that you hate it when you say it's overrated if you're using the word correctly it just means that you don't that you think it's overhyped but nevertheless anyway but you should watch the screen instead it's it's better (laughs) yeah went on an epic side road there (laughs) But uh, what do you have next? So my third choice is another series from the early 2000s, and it is one of my personal favorite Disney Channel series. It's Kim Possible. It ran from 2002 to 2007. Uh, It's about a young girl named Kim Possible who is a high schooler, but she also does go off and save the world in her spare time. Uh, she often feuds with the supervillain known as it's Draken and his sidekick Shigo, and uh, and she and Kim Possible has her friend come along with her, Ron Stoppable, and he has a pet mole named Rufus, and uh, they're they're helped out by their techno friend Wade, and it's just it's just a really really fun show. It's got a great animation. It's one of the few high school related shows that doesn't like dive into all the high school cliches like it, it's not it's not it's not like that it's there the characters are actually three-dimensional characters and there's there's some long-running stories and it's just it's it's just a really good it's really good stuff overall but i must warn you do not watch the movie that came out recently the live action one because that is just, it's just god awful. It sucked out all the humor and it just was, it just replaced it with just awkwardness. Like uh-huh. so thick you could cut it with a knife. Watch <laughs> the TV show, which is excellent. Yeah, I actually have seen the movie. <laughs> but, but yes, yeah, so the TV show is so charming. It's so cute. And the animation is really fun. And what's nice too about, uh, not that I really divide things by, gender too much but it is really a show that any whether little little boy little girl teenager whatever like i think that almost any 
anybody will like it, <laughs> you know, uh, like it's because there's the action and there's, there's a, uh, I don't know. I just think it's, it's just such a, it's got such fun characters and it's unlike say a princess show, which is going to be more in general, more feminine, you know, more girls are going to like that. And then there's, you know, stuff like transformers or whatever the boys are going to tend to like more. This is, just, I just feel like it's such a unique show that, that anybody will like. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, it's, it's one of those things where I keep hearing that they may do another season kind of similar to the clone wars. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. if they do another season, like the animated stuff and they bring the original people back, maybe they do it like after all the high school stuff has ended and maybe mm-hmm. Kim possible is more of an adult then I would love to see that. I'd, I'd love to see mm-hmm. that kind of natural progression. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting because uh, that would make more sense. Cause unless Christie's voice has, is still can do the same voice, you know, but That's her voice point. might sound yes. different. So they might need to age it just because of that, or I guess get a new voice actor. That's a good point. Yeah. So uh, good choice. I like that very much. All right, so my next choice is uh, is another Disney Channel original movie, and I think I, I mentioned, I think it was last time, uh, about how my mom had uh, a lot of, uh, had, my mom had three uh, babies while I was, when I was 10, when I was 16, and when, like, she had one baby, but three total. <laughs> Um, when I was growing up and when I was 10, when I was 16 and when I was 18. (laughs) And so my mom having babies was kind of a big part of my growing up. And so, uh, I am talking about the film called Quince. Yeah, this was definitely, I mean, I was a grown up by the time this got released, but nevertheless, it was some, it's definitely something I could relate to this movie, uh, because it's about this teenager who uh, has been an only child and uh, and all of a sudden her parents end up having quints. So all of a sudden there's five babies and all the stress that goes along with that. And, and so I, I just, I think it, it really captures sort of that feeling of uh, you, you know, you want some attention from your parents, but they literally are like physically and emotionally incapable right now because they're dealing with these all these babies and all these infants and everything and so that's definitely something i could relate to and uh, it has kimberly kimberly brown jay brown uh who was in halloween town uh and is fun and in the role in the lead role and uh so i just think it's a cute movie (laughs) have you ever heard i uh I'm an only child and I always wanted a brother and a brother or a sister and that uh-huh. just never happened. So, mm-hmm. uh, but hearing you talk about Quince, it's like, it sounds like, it sounds like a, it sounds like a good Disney channel movie. So I'll definitely yeah. have to take a look at it. It definitely is a cute one for sure. And I think it's a situation a lot of people can relate to you at least of, of feeling like your parents are distracted and, uh, because whatever it is, you know, that's, that's, uh, taking over, uh, from you and that sort of trans transition, uh, over. And, uh, so that's, that's why I picked it. Uh, what about you? What's your next choice? Next choice. So my next choice is another recent, uh, series. It's, uh, called Gravity Falls. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of this one. I love this series. I actually have the whole series on DVD and I have the most recent journal that they did. I even dressed up for, uh, for Comic-Con and then D23 as, <laughs> as Dipper. I love the, I love the show. So it's a bit of a gray area in terms of a hidden gem, but it's yeah. a, it's a show that I watched on. It's like one of the last Disney Channel shows that I went out of my way to watch, like every episode mm-hmm. when it premiered. Uh, it's about these two uh, these two kids who stay the summer with their eccentric Uncle Stan at this at this town called Gravity Falls, and uh, 
and they fight off all these mystical enemies and all these weird things happen. One of my favorite episodes, I don't know about you, Rachel, but one of my favorite episodes is called Fight Fighters, where, uh, where Dipper, uh, his favorite video game character, comes to life. And it's clearly, like, it's clearly an homage to Street Fighter, the video game, because the character is clearly like Ryu, because he has almost the same look. They had to, like, change it up because of copyright reasons, but for, it, it's basically, it's, it's a loving homage to Street Fighter, I would say. But, uh, but what, what makes the show interesting is that it's kind of like, it's kind of like an Alfred Hitchcock movie in that every character has something going on. And it just, as the series goes on, it's like the, it's like the onion, more layers peel off as you go on. And that's what made the show fascinating for me because you know that, you know that Uncle Stan is like, you have a history and it's just, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. The show only lasted two seasons, which is rather unfortunate, but, um, but if they ever decide to make a movie or do another season of it, I would love it. And I would probably be the first in line. <laughs> me too i the one unique thing though about the show only lasting two seasons at least it could be spin but creator alex hirsch he claims at least that that the story was done that, that was all he claims it was not canceled that he was finished telling the story and i mean it is pretty believable by the end uh the uh it's it feels it feels very complete i think by the end uh, it's been, and the last season, because it was only two seasons, but it took them, one frustrating thing about the show is it took them four years because they would have this release schedule where they'd have like five episodes a year and then there'd be six months and then you'd get like five more. And it was, it was kind of weird. Uh, but I, 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 I often refer to the show as the uh, kids version of Doctor Who. Like every week you turn in, tune in, you would tune in and, uh, and see what, kind of supernatural weird crazy kind of an adventure that dipper and mabel would get into and it's so delightful and i love particularly mabel so much but i <laughs> i love dipper too uh and i don't know i just it was so creative especially that last like what six seven episodes uh, weird, weird mageddon, weird mageddon. Right? it was so creative and i i just loved it and I, I would love if they did more, but. But uh, if what you're telling me is right and the creator feels yeah. like I've done all that I think I can do, then know. You know, who am I to say, I yeah. want more, you know, I, I know. gotta respect, uh, gotta respect his feelings and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what he said, but, uh, but I love the show. I, I just, especially, I just, I love a character like Mabel is such a, lovely character and it really encouraged a lot of other really creative shows for a while on disney channel because you had you had gravity falls you had star versus the forces of evil you had wander over yonder just these really creative uh shows that uh that i think i think it's pretty clear to me that the animated shows uh, of the last 10 years are far better than the animated shows of the 80s and 90s that we look back with nostalgia even something like the ducktales i think the new reboot is far better than <laughs> than the, uh, the old <laughs> show i know i know i'm just feeling it today but no i i really think you watch that old the old ducktales and I've, I, I've seen a handful of episodes but i know the premise <laughs> yes because uh, so I was going to do a review of the DuckTales and I started watching like every episode is exactly the same. I mean, exactly the same thing. And whereas now, because people binge watch and people stuff like that, I think that people are forced to be more creative because they don't have that week or maybe longer in between where kids can kind of forget and they can just make the exact same episode over and over and over again. <laughs> I started I started noticing that trend when I started watching Breaking Bad. It was like one episode is like one chunk of a massive story. Yeah. It's not like one story finished in like an hour or 30 minutes. No, it's yeah. like one episode is like one chapter of like a book. 
and it's it's not serialized it's like it's a long-running affair yeah but but gravity falls is just it's so it's so beautiful and creative and the characters are so lovable and uh even grunkle stan with his grumpiness is great i highly i can't recommend it more highly so i'm glad you one of one of my favorite quotes of his is uh i can't remember the context of this off the top of my head but it's just like when something anticlimactic happens i'll just be like well that happened <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh very good very very good choice Okay, so my uh, last choice, I guess, we, we've almost done. Um, my last choice is it's pretty simple. It's The Prince and the Popper, and this is Mickey Mouse. And, uh, and it's, of course, the, uh, the classic story of the poor uh, peasant who looks just like the prince, and they end up switching places and uh, what's gonna happen this was actually released in 1990 and uh, and it's a longer it was one i kept thinking about when everybody was so upset about the olaf's frozen adventure and i'm like it's not like the only time in the history of the world there's been a long short uh, before a feature but at film. least at least the prince and the pauper is not annoying <laughs> <laughs> well we can agree to disagree on that but this is uh, this was 25 minutes uh, as uh, just like Olaf's frozen adventure. And so it has happened before. And this was placed in front of the rescuers down under, uh, and which it didn't do that. It didn't really help <laughs> because rescuers down under didn't do that well. Uh, but, uh, nevertheless it was before and there, it's just got an old school charm to it because it has goofy and Donald and Pete. Oh, uh, Pluto. Pete no pete uh that's the grumpy goofy dog oh, yeah 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 you're right <laughs> pete. um and then of course the, then the two mickeys and it's just fun it's fun fairy tale so that's what i i would bet a lot of people haven't seen it so you should check it out i definitely will mm -hmm. so what is your last pick so my last pick is from uh, from the glorious year of 1985. This is uh, another show that lasted uh, that started off the Disney Afternoon uh, block, and it is the Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Uh, I've been slowly working my way through all of the shows uh, on uh, on the Disney Afternoon block that lasted from the late 80s into the 90s, and the first one was the Gummy Bears, and uh, and it's got. <laughs> It's just, it's a really simple show and it's, it's just really fun. It's about these group of gummy bears who live, uh, who live in a forest and they harvest what's called gummy berry juice. I know, real original, but <laughs> it, they, they, uh, they face off against, you know, wizards and dragons and it's far more intense than a show called The Adventures of the Gummy Bears should possibly be. But it's uh, it's really really good stuff. It's got a really good cast, including Lorenzo Music, I believe it's how it's called, who voiced who voiced Garfield on his show for many years, and just has such a recognizable voice. Like it has a he has a very deep voice, you know. So you're not going to be able to miss him. Uh, it's definitely underrated, especially in a time that included shows like Gargoyles and the original Ducktales and and Goof Troop and Quack Pack and just such good stuff from Disney, especially on Disney Channel during the time. So The Adventures of the Gummy Bears is definitely high quality stuff. Yeah, I mean, I remember hearing, I remember watching it uh, when I, you know, when I was little and uh, thinking it was fun. I mean, in retrospect, it's like, what a weird idea. What a strange idea I mean, for a show. They got, they got away with it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I remember enjoying it. I remember thinking it was cute. I, I haven't, I mean, who knows if I'd have the same experience I have with DuckTales. But, uh, uh, but uh, I haven't watched it since I was a kid. But you think it holds up pretty good? Yes, I believe so. Mm, cool. Good. Yeah, and it has a really catchy, uh, I remember the theme song. Yeah, the, the theme song is just... <laughs> it's yeah. amazing it's it's 
definitely one of the best ever that no one talks about. Yeah, and isn't the villain, I know it's not Skeletor, but isn't it kind of like Skeletor? It's like Skeletor, but without the mask. Okay. <laughs> cool, good. <laughs> I wonder when we're going to be the live action remake. <laughs> oh, God. No, that, that'll give me nightmares. <laughs> Uh, very good. All right. Well, we did it. We have our recommendations. So let's go over our lists. So I have Old Yeller, Playdate with Destiny, The Screen Team, Quince, and The Prince and the Popper. And my list is Camp Rock, Phineas and Ferb, Kim Possible, Gravity Falls, and The Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this again. And let us know if you're listening, what you've been watching on Disney Plus, what your recommendations are. And we would love to hear. And uh, so, Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd is at RyanCam20. And on my YouTube channel, just type in Ryan Cam Movie Reviews. Uh, it'll take you straight there. Uh, the, next, the latest episode of the AFI Project, where I talk about every movie on AFI's top 100 of all time list, just dropped today, or at when uh, we're recording this on a Monday. So it'll be dropping on a Monday, where I talk about Singing in the Rain, the glorious Technicolor musical from mm. the 1950s. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. And then upcoming, I'll be talking about Gone with the Wind, Schindler's mm. List, and just a lot, a lot of great stuff. A it's lot of quality stuff coming. Yeah, a lot. It's a good thing we're in quarantine. There's a lot of long movies. Yeah, you got to kill the time somehow. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very good. I know for my blind spot project over on my blog, I picked in April to do a trilogy of movies. Uh, they're called the Colors Trilogy. Uh, there's three movies. They're uh, these uh, by this Polish director. Anyway, I was like, wow, that's going to be really tough. When I, because I set it up in January, what I was going to pick for the whole year, and like, it's going to be really hard in April to do three movies. <laughs> it's like, oh, little did I know there'd be a quarantine. <laughs> yeah, uh, that so, that, uh, that definitely knew? helps. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, and I just posted my review of the that trilogy, so if you're interested. But yeah, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, we're at the I'm at the Hallmarkies podcast where we are posting up a storm these last few weeks. So make sure you check over there as well. And uh, thanks again. This was really fun, and we'll talk again next week. Yes, Bye, we everyone. will. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>